Excellent. I am here with Emily Robida. Super excited about this. So here is how it goes down. Welcome to What It Takes, the Tuesday weekly call. My name is Jake Story. I am a manager of coach development for Canada here at Beachbody. We have an entire group of people dedicated to helping coaches reach their potential. If you are a diamond coach or higher, check out FAQ 7581 to learn more about how um, we can help you achieve your goals. So for today's weekly mini series, I am excited uh, to have on here the 2017 Leadership Award winner, 14 star diamond coach, three time elite coach and four time team cup champion and mom of three, Emily Robida. Hi, Jim. how are you? Emily? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. So before we get started, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my mom is three and my daughter is actually four today. So happy birthday, Callie. <laughs> I have um, my oldest son is Leo is six and my youngest Jack is going to be two very soon. So mostly I'm a mom of three. I've been doing this business for five years now and I am getting even more excited without with the years going. Um, and I'm just so happy to be talking to you guys today. Excellent. Well, happy birthday to Callie. That is super fun. Four years old. Congrats to her. Um, I'm sure she is your little. And her first trip, her first trip was four years ago in Las Vegas for Summit. She was 15 days old. Oh my God. This is what it takes, people. (laughs) (laughs) I love your first Summit story. But before we kind of get into that, let's do this. How were you introduced to Beachbody? I like most of most of you guys, I was a customer first. So when I got pregnant the first time with my son, Leo, I remember seeing an infomercial in the middle of the night. It was turbo fire. It looked awesome. I had tried turbo jam. I had hip hop abs at home. Maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about, but these were <laughs> older programs um, that I had tried, but not really committed to. And uh, after I had my son, I really wanted to get in shape. We had a wedding plan. So I wanted to be on the I wanted to look good on the beach and for my husband for that special day. So I really committed to the 90 days of this program and I got in the best shape of my life. I was not someone who would tell herself that she's disciplined. I never considered myself a disciplined person until I found this program. I really fell in love with the whole concept of working out at home and how it made me feel and realizing that I could do hard things and I could get great results by following a winning plan. Um, So this is like the short version of how I got started. I got great results. People started to ask me about it. I would refer them to Beachbody, not knowing that there was a business behind the whole thing. And then my coach found me on Facebook and she added me to one of her groups. Long story short, she asked me if I was interested in coaching, which I had no idea about. I jumped in. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. All I knew is that I had fell in love with Turbo Fire. It changed my life. And I was just naturally telling everybody about it. So I was like, if I can get paid to refer people to this, that's pretty awesome. And this is how we got started. Awesome. I love it. And I swear Turbo Fire is one of like the most popular. I saw that and it looked amazing conversation oh cool I still get go back to it because I love it so much it's so good I love it so once you signed up describe what the early days looked like for you as a coach so when I signed up it was the end of my first maternity leave actually the only one I took because after that I was able to just be with Beachbody but um I was it was the end of my maternity leave here in Quebec I we have a year that we can take um but then <laughs> the last of the like half the year it's like you're getting 55 percent of your salary which is like a big cut when you're not making so much money um so yeah so I was at the end of my maternity leave um I jumped in like a month and a half before getting back to work and I just you know kind of tipped my toes in I didn't really know what I wanted to do with that got back to work and this is really one of the biggest aha moments in my my beach buddy career because this is when I made the decision that I wanted to be it to be a career um so when I got back to work I was working as a um video conference uh, coordinator for 
the federal government as a consultant and it was a good job but I mean it wasn't so fulfilling uh, my office had no windows <laughs> I was like this is one of the biggest like things that I share now it's like I can work outside in the sun <laughs> but yeah so it was like kind of a slap in the face because I realized I was going to spend so much time away from my son and the other thing that was really hard is my husband was working away from town. So we would only see each other on weekends. And I always get emotional when I think about that because I remember clearly that day. I got back in my car after leaving Leo at daycare and I broke down in tears and I called my mom. It's like, I can't believe this is going to be my life. I don't want this to be my life. I don't want to work anymore. And you know, when you, when you draw a line in the sand, that was like my a defining moment. I was like, okay, I don't know what it takes. I don't know what I'll have to do, but I am committed to making this work. And everything was so new in Canada. We had, I had no leaders to look up for. Um, and I'm from the French part of Canada. So my market is French. I didn't, I didn't have anyone who was French or that I could look up to, but I had all these amazing leaders in the States mostly uh, going on the national wake up call every week. This was like my fuel. I was hearing those women talk about how they became su successful, like being stay at home moms or raising their kids. And I was like, this can be me. And, um, so when I first started, it was really hard because I was, I was working full time. My husband was away from town, but I was committed and I, it was hard, but I loved it. I didn't count the hours and I believed that it was going to pay off because I trusted the plan, just like I did with Turbo Fire. Like I followed the plan. I followed the schedule. I didn't try to make it to change it up. I knew that if I were, was disciplined, if I was going to show up every day and I was going to follow the winning plan that I had in my hands, it would pay off. And I had this huge goal to become a full-time coach. And later on, uh, I was able to, to do so. So it was a step-by-step thing, but um, this is what it looked like. I was work waking up very early in the morning, 4 a.m., um, working on my business first, first thing before Leo would get up, bring him to daycare, work on the bus ride to get there. I would work on lunchtime. Like that was my passion. And I, I mean, I, I made the sacrifices of cutting TV, which is like sounds silly today, but um, you know, I just made room for this business to grow and I was able to build it up um, from there. I love it. The, the big things I took away from that is you had a defining moment that led to you following the process that you knew would get you the results. Needed. Yeah. So I and like I, yeah, I feel like we we talk about the why all the time and why that makes you cry. And like, this is real. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I remember that day and I feel like sometimes if we're scared to making that invite or scared of sharing our story online, which I was and I still am sometimes, if you remember why you're doing it and if your why is strong enough, you'll be able to face your fears and you're just going to do it. Even if you're scared, you're going to do it because it's for the bigger picture. I love it. Okay, what do you feel are some attributes or habits you have that contribute to your success? I mean, we talk about it all the time. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but consistency is the name of the game. I mean, most people won't show up every day. Most people won't do the, the vital behaviors every day like they should. Um, most people just will give up when they don't feel motivated. Uh, when I discovered the power of discipline, I realized that motivation was that outside thing, that circumstantial thing that I had no control on so much that if I was waiting for that, there would be more days that I wouldn't be doing the work than days that I would. Um, so once I realized that I had to, to create those habits of just showing up every day and getting it done no matter what and creating that pocket of time where I would have to make time for my work, it got me further and further. And I always focus on like, growing and incre increasing my my standards for myself and for my own results and always moving forward so I feel like really consistency hunger hunger is a big one I am I was hungry I wanted my life to change I still want to improve my life and I still have that hunger of in inspiring people to do the same but I feel like if you're not hungry enough it's, it, you're not going to have the consistency to show up every day. I love that. So hunger leads to consistency. I think so. Yeah. And they feed off of each other, right? 
Yep. <laughs> I love it. So if I'm a brand new coach and I don't know where to start, um, what advice would you give me? Yeah, well, I think the, the and that's an advice that you can carry on throughout your life is to focus on you first, um, leading yourself first. If you can't lead yourself first, you won't be able to lead others. So I feel like, um, I mean, not everybody gets into this business having the transformation, physical or mostly internal uh, transformation that you'll have if you commit to one of our programs or the pro products that we have. Um, not everybody does, but if you, if you do, then just sharing your journey and, you know, journaling what you're going through and putting yourself out there on social media and being very authentic, transparent, sharing your emotions throughout and what you're discovering and how you're growing through that. I feel like this is one of the most important things you can do. Um, people follow people that are going somewhere. So you might not think that you maybe you didn't have that big success uh, financially yet, or maybe you didn't have that. I'm asking you to focus on what you have, what you love about coaching and sharing that. I feel like just focusing, focusing on your journey first and ask yourself, like, are you willing to do the work to, to improve your life? Because I feel like one of the, we're all different. Like, and if you look at coaches, there's no, like, you know, there's no mold for a successful coach. I mean, we come in various shapes and forms, but I feel like everybody's got the same foundation, which is belief and um, believing in ourselves and also believing that we deserve to have that better life that we strive for. And once you know that you deserve it, you'll be able to face your fears. You'll be able to do the things that you need to do to, to move forward and reach your goals. I love it. So in order to have long-term success, I need to see the short-term results, right? And that's dedicating myself to a program. Um, saying, what am I willing to sacrifice to get there? And doing these simple principles. Absolutely. Creating small daily wins and making them like a huge deal because they can be a huge deal. I mean, not everybody, like, not everybody has the discipline to wake up every morning and read. Okay, so this might sound silly, but if it does, then go read The Slight Edge <laughs> because, I mean, this is it. This is like people will be inspired. If you commit to do something that you've never done before and you share it with people and you you get a transformation out of it and not physical. Like, I mean, I since I began coaching, I remember writing like my perfect day. It was one of the exercises I had in one of the books I read. And it was like, I, I, I wrote, I am waking up early by choice. Like this was like all, one of the affirmations and people were like so impressed when I was get, getting up early, but I never was an early person, you know, an early morning, but I conditioned myself to it. And I said, you know what, I'm going to do it for myself. And also I'm going to inspire people and show them that they can do it too. So little things like that, it doesn't have to be a financial or a weight loss, but something that you, a habit that you're changing in your daily life that improves your life and that can, you can share with others and it's going to inspire them to take that step too. I love it. So spot on. Okay. Now if I'm a, for a coach who's struggling or even debating with quitting, what would you say to them? That's a big question because I feel like it's, um, I mean, if it's one of my coaches on my team, obviously we're going to, I'm going to try to find out why, but I feel like I was thinking about that question. I was like, okay, I would ask you why you're considering to quit. And then I would ask you, do you think these reasons are related to beach party or the coaching? Or do you think there might be some other things that, you know, it, because for me, a lot of times people, when they struggle, we all struggle. I mean, when we struggle, we might think that beach because of beach body, because of our business with beach body, but, it's not. <laughs> it's things that we have to work through in our life. And if we struggle with time management, if we struggle with, um, you know, putting our limits, if we struggle, this is not about beach body. This is about how own struggles. And if we don't learn to face them, I believe that life is going to come with other ways to give us opportunities to work through these things and improve. So for me, it would be that. And then after that, well, I mean, 
not everybody's going to build a six figure income and that's okay. Not everybody's going to become an elite coach and that's okay. There are so many ways to be successful. And I would ask you to define what a six, what, what does it mean to you to be successful with your coaching business? And then I would ask you what makes you happy about coaching and focus on that. You don't have to quit. Take what makes you happy and continue because what we do is amazing. We're, we're a community of positive people. And if you disconnect yourself from that, you're actually, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice in my opinion. So that would be what I would say. <laughs> I love it. So overcome your shortcomings and that'll lead to the success in the long run. Mm-hmm. So, okay. What is the best advice someone has given you regarding your business? Oh, I thought about this one and I was like, okay, there's so many things I can say, but then I got it. I got it. <laughs> I don't know if you know Jim Ron, <laughs> but um, um, that was one of the first audio that I listened to when I started coaching. And I don't even know how it got to my home, but you know, I guess it was, I, it was like giving me a gift. Um, the art of exceptional living for me is like my Bible <laughs> for life and for coaching. And I know it by heart. I love it so much. Um, and the one thing that he says in there that really I feel like for me has made the biggest impact in my life is to work harder on myself than I do on my job. And what does that mean? Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Well, it means doing the hard work inside to better yourself. And um, it's not the easy quick fix. (laughs) Again, it's like, trying to from and that leads to the the whole idea of having a personal growth plan i remember one of my first summits um john maxwell was there and he talked about that whole concept so i know a lot of the leaders will talk about personal development and you might think eh, it is the foundation of what a successful life is for me um if no one can take that away from me like everything I'm learning, all the work I'm doing, no one can take that away from me. And that makes me who I am. I never led, like, I mean, I, we have amazing products and I, I share my journey. I post my workout videos. I, I do all the, these things, but I always focus on leading with my why, why I do the things that I do. And also my values, what I believe in my philosophy. And I feel like people are choosing me, you know, they can buy fitness programs anywhere they can do workouts on youtube if they want but at the end of the day i feel like if they're choosing to be in my challenge group it's because they want to be part of of what i represent and what i believe in um so working on myself like always having and I, that's what i tell my teams too you know don't do personal development as a check on your list like ask yourself what are the skills? What are the tools that I need to get to the next level in my life, in my business? Like, what are your goals and what, what do you think are, is stopping you right now? And let's work on that and have, it's got to be intentional and it's got to be also, you have to do it in a smart way not just check it off the list. And I mean, I love girl, wash your face. I listened to the audio on <laughs> the drive back Sherbrooke uh, back home and It was awesome. And it really, I'm sure it improved my life, but like, don't go listen to this just because everybody else saying that it's amazing. It's okay to do it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with personal development. I I think that's, and doing it all the time, but also having it in a way that's uh, intentional and asking yourself, what do I need right now to get to where I want to go? Because at the end of the day, it's the person that you will become that will deserve to get that goal. So I feel like that's one of the biggest takeaways for me is to work on yourself harder than you do on your job. I love it. The thing I love about it is it's one word that we often overlook and it's personal yes. development, yes. right? Not every, uh, and not everybody else development, personal. So what pertains to me? Yeah. Love that. Yeah, personal and professional, because we don't talk about that either. But there's also this aspect of like understanding the business, understanding how it works, uh, understanding social media, marketing, these are like, you know, um, professional tools also, uh, but also the personal work is very, very important. Love it. Okay. We're going to go speed round on you. Um, so first on average, how much time do you spend working a business per day? Okay. It's been five years. So my life as a coach has evolved. Um, and it still is like 
depends on where I am and depends on my goals. So mm-hmm. the short answer is depends on my goals, what I'm working towards to. So if it's team cup or if we have a launch, I'm going to spend more time and like, and so I'm going to spend more, more time working in the first few years. I mean, I don't remember. I mean, I don't know if I've taken, I, I don't think I have a, taken a real day off. Like I would have to go on an Island and disconnect myself, which I'm not there yet, but um So the short answer right now, now that I have an assistant and my husband is working with me at home and I have a lot of help during the the week, I would say like between three to five hours and then on weekends might be an hour a day or more or less. Um, But like before it would be, it would be, I mean, it would be not all the time. I don't want to say that because I don't want to scare anybody. I feel like when it's your passion, you're not really counting the hours, but I would say like really sitting down and working, like I, I believe someone can build a very successful business three hours a day, like very dedicated focus work on the right activities every single day. And I think that, I think it's doable for anyone, even someone with a family, um, doing a full-time job. So well, and your testimony to that, right? Because you had a family starting a external job, your husband traveled. Yes. And so you at the beginning took the time to sacrifice three hours a day, whether it's waking up earlier or working late to get that time. in. Yes, absolutely. And again, I feel like it's a tricky question because it's, you know, Beachbody does not guarantee any level of success. It all depends on your skill. Um, I mean, it's true. How efficient are you with your time how focused are you like how a uh, how good are you at you know overcoming distractions and asking yourself is this the best thing I should be doing right now to move forward because I feel like we're all human beings trying to fight procrastination so we have to develop those habits of like saying okay what am I working on right now? What are the activities I should be doing to get there? And just really focusing on top priorities, top priorities. Love it. Okay. What's your average SC per month? And break this down in like when you started versus. Yeah, it's, it, it, I wanted to go there because I was like, this is not the same. Like it's an evolving business for me anyways. And I've always like tried to increase my standards for myself um I always hit success club my first month was success club six and then after that was 10 plus mostly 20 I would say uh, most months Uh, sometimes less sometimes more Um, but in the last few years I've I've really I've increased my own standards I wanted to uh, create bigger goals for myself so I knew I needed to recruit more clients and and coaches um so i did um the average for the last six months and it's pretty crazy i'm like even for me like a few years ago it would have been like this is impossible you know how like when you raise your own standards it becomes your new normal mm-hmm. so i feel like it's kind of that so in the last few last six months my average was 121 success club points there were months in there that i did did 60 and then there was a month in there i did two 23. So, I mean, and that was like a um, ED dip session launch. So, I mean, it, it all depends. And, and it's a different life for me right now. And it's a different way of building. I know many coaches that are very successful hitting success club 10 every month or 20. I, I mean, that that's my, that's my progress. So it's been my, my average for the last six months. But then again, like I said, March was 54 and then December 223. So it depends on where I am and if there's a launch or not and how, how many hours I'm putting into. <laughs> I love it though. And started out at 20 and you increase your standards as your level of business increase. I love that. Now, what percentage of time do you dedicate to your team versus your own business? I feel like the 80, 20 rule applies very well. Um, I remember last summit though, there was the training at leadership. We had that leadership training And then, you know, the more you, the bigger your team became, the more you would spend time on your team, but it's not like 50, 50, you know, the the biggest amount of time I spend is on activities to inspire people to make a change in their lives and join me in my challenge groups or in in my, my team. So 
I would say still 80 or 70, 30, 70% of my time is on recruiting and um, taking care of my challengers and, but mostly recruiting, like putting myself out there, creating content, adding value to people's life on social media, giving for free, uh, you know, just trying to inspire people to change. And I feel like that's, that's the name of the game. We always have to be working towards getting um, new people to get in touch with our solution. So yeah, even five years in, most of my time is spent on getting uh, new people to, to try what we have. Love it. So with that, how many coaches do you enroll per month? And again, starting out versus now. Oh yeah. I remember when I started out, my up like diamond said, okay, you should like aim to recruit two coaches a month. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I was really into like, that was the first few months, right? I was really good with fitness for me. It was easy. My comfort zone to uh, talk about the fitness, but the business aspect of things, I felt like it was harder and not as natural. And I feel like a lot of coaches have to go through that transition anyways, and my team, maybe because we attract who we are, but um, I feel like there's this click at one point you're like, okay, if I want to build, you know, a steady income, I, I need a team. I can't just rely on myself. Um, so the first few years, maybe, you know, three to five a month. Um, and now I would say like minimum 10 and then between 10 and 20, uh, most of them are builders. Like they're, I don't, I don't, talk about the discount so much I offer it but it's not something I lead with so much I'm more of a con I, I convert more the challengers to coaches or I will um but or I will like attract people that wants that want to start a business right away so I'd say like at least like 10 new coaches that want to build a business sometimes more sometimes less but minimum 10 15 um a month well so starting out three to five and currently at your uh, status of elevation, you know, 10 to 15 working coaches a month, which is awesome. Okay. Last, we've got our random hat question. So, <laughs> these are super random, by the way. I was reading some of them earlier. They're really random. <laughs> so this question is, if you were on death row, what would your last meal be? My last meal? Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know if I'd be hungry. <laughs> like who, who, who do I get to eat it with? That's more, that's most what I'm interested in. Um, I'm not that fancy when it comes to food. Like I have my comfort foods. Like I can say poutine coming from Quebec, <laughs> but that's like, well, I feel like I would feel heavy going to heaven. <laughs> yeah. Well um, then let's change it. Let's change it up a little bit. Random hat question. Same scenario. If you were on death row, who, which three people would you like to have dinner with? I mean, dead or alive, like people that oh, you love to sit down with. Well, my husband, for sure. My kids would love to have them around. I don't. Okay. So family will kids. count that as one. Family will count as one. Husband. Okay. Family as one. And then I talked to you about Jim Rohn. I always said that, that if I were to pick someone, I could, talk to actually I didn't want I don't want to talk to him I just want to sit and listen like I just want him to talk and listen so Jim Rohn would be one um and then just Maya Angelou popped in my head but I mean I guess there will be so many people I'd like to Oprah Winfrey I love her oh some... yeah I love her so much so yeah I, th I think so but I, I mean I guess I, I should answer the question for food I <laughs> I, I love food so much, but I'm like, I'm a, I'm a big salad fan. That's silly. Like it doesn't sound fancy, but I'd have yeah, like, a I'll take poutine any day. Yeah. Poutine. <laughs> <laughs> For the American coaches who don't know what poutine is, it's fries with gravy and cheese curds on top and you can add some smoked meat some other things but for the most part it's just fries yeah. gravy and cheese. The curds. secret is really about cheese curds. You got to find a good one. It doesn't look good, but it's pretty it definitely tastes good it's addictive <laughs> <laughs> it is well emily thank you so much for doing this today super appreciate it if there's one major kind of underlining thing i can take from what you've said today it's follow the plan whether that be the program whether that be the training from your upline whether that be trainings from other coaches such as this call if you follow the plan you get results and so i loved that super simple and underlining message Thank you so much for having me. I, hosted, I hope this helps.
It was so great. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and we'll chat later. Take care guys.